mind has come to medication in the last year just to get out of the bed i notice that his recall is not as sharp he has the he has done some meditation retreats and has some tools but does not meditate a very close family friend's son son committed suicide a few years ago he too struggled with depression and was also getting professional help i try to not to dwell in the past though i have to take some responsibility of where he is at today as i am his mother who had expectation of his academically gifted child mindfulness is my savior it keeps me sane when the stories start i stay in the present moment when there are feelings of sadness and heaviness i stay present and send him and myself metta bhante can you help please touch touch on the subject of depression and suicide these are subjects too taboo to talk about in our society and also any advice you can offer is most welcome thank you with metta oh, of course it is not a problem of the mother it's a problem of humanity everywhere you find this and therefore all the our economic political and social achievements are going to be thoroughly questionable when such a situation happens everything is positive but the person is in depression and if the mother also have no way out like mindfulness uh, they are attitudes and contri- the, the behavior also contribute to the child so therefore this depression is a conja- contagious disease so whenever he is in a uh, society its way behavior and everything is the all the surrounding people also get depressed so best thing is the surrounding people to maintain mindfulness and never absorb his depression but to re- uh, return back the neutral kind of a response that will be a kind of that is the best the surrounding people can do this has been recognized by the sigmund freud as the death instinct and uh, in buddhism it is called vibhava tanha so when and where bhava tanha is being question when and where the bhava tanha is being uh, impeded impeded or blocked then immediately that in change into the vibhava tanha and self destructive or destructing to the other people so depression is a mild form of the uh, vibhava tanha so they have oh, is a question whether such a person can do meditate so in ims inside meditation society they conducted so much of research as to what are the levels one is good for a meditation or not or subject is meditation and medication the the depression situation they say is still hopeful whenever it is go to the bipolar or schizophrenia schizophrenic attack this is better not to touch with the meditation but even the the for a people like depressed uh, the best thing is don't use the term meditation instead use the term mindfulness so it is not a religious thing you just be mindful when and we are depressed you know you are in the depression and when we are you are fairly normal you know as it is likewise the particular person has to uh, be mindful and it is a uh, exactly uh, relieving answer but that kind of people uh, have no energy to exert to be mindful so therefore that particular mother should tighten her belts and try to be thoroughly mindful throughout the day and make this as a um, the sign or signal so whenever you become you succumb to that type of situation that is not a situation where you can start mindfulness 
by that time you must have already prepared mindfulness and then counseling uh, that kind of a person depressed person your son counsel with mindful the uh, psychotherapy without the self concept all the psychotherapy in the west is based on the self so therefore even at the best of the psychotherapy uh, you both parties therapist as well as the instructor thoroughly engrossed with self notion so therefore mark epstein understanding the both he wrote a book psychotherapy without the self and he say he also write a book uh, on th- thought without a thinker so there he really discussed uh, about how to deal with kind of a people pe- person uh, with no self perspectives it is completely new thing to the western uh, psychiatry but uh, mark epstein is a westerner he says the all the psychotherapies based on the self but you can do it and once you or, or if you are uh, to recognize the situation whenever the situation taken under control the mother may recognize son is more advanced in non self theory that is why the self destruction came but co- difficult to cope up with with his th- rational mind as a less other rational mind so therefore he may be more advanced no, so that he is not fit into the normal norms in the world but if the mother can develop the rapport develop the 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 connection or communication uh, the the depressed people show more and more non self characteristics but the society unders label them as mad doppel them as lowly and therefore they can't fit into but if you consider each and every sentient be- being is eccentric as a mother and father son no difference both of them are mad both of them are insane so understand it and try to cope up with but uh, make sure anach anatta sanya whether you are talking with your son uh, as a person or soul and if you have any kind of understanding son is inferior than me or i am superior than him uh, then better you not to tackle that question both are the same and your compassion is because you are lucky to be mindful before you fall into depression otherwise that is a contagious one so they are about be mindful and uh, whenever possible give a free association to the child uh, with the uh, without the self kind of a perspective and uh, whenever the child is going to practice mindfulness he will find the counselor within himself mindfulness is the mental factor function as a counselor because it is always develop the choiceless awareness it is always develop the evenly suspended attention so you you can look at yourself as an outsider so instead of a counselor you can inter- incorporate mindfulness or replace mindfulness but the thing is for that you must have already de- developed mindfulness so therefore mother must take thorough attention steadfastness in the mindfulness and when and where you feel uh, contented when and where you feel steadfastness is mindfulness that is the best time you have to associate the sun and that way you can have your own protection your own protection of your psychology as a, uh, as a last give kind of a healing vibration or that kind of thing in the, in sri lanka or the buddhist perspective we do bodhi puja and kind of all the meritorious deeds in order to bring the ma- child bring the attention outwardly and engage in kind of a social work like uh, bodhi puja and other rituals things and each and every religion is performing that kind of thing uh, they are external thing or ritualistic thing but for that for to some extent they are also helpful so i would recommend you to read 
the psychotherapy without the self by Mark Epstein, at least very, very read, quite a readable book. And then you may definitely find a lot of hints for these kind of questions. Venerable Bhante, Tiruvan Saranai, Anapanasati Meditation. During the sitting meditation, I recognize the in-breath and out-breath. In-breath is first felt at the borders of the nostril and then along the inner borders of the nose. Sometimes long and short and slightly cooler. I can also feel the in-breath reaching the center of the chest at times. Out-breath is felt as a gush of air at the lower border of nostril and slightly warmer. After a while, I felt a tingling sensation over the upper and lower teeth. With time, I also felt the hardness or solid-like feeling of the teeth. I recognize this as belonging to the solid matter of the body, within brackets, Patavidatu. Then I focused on the breath again. Venerable Brant, please kindly advise me on if what I did was correct and how may I improve my meditation practice. May you reach Nirvana in this life itself. Uh, if this is the first and foremost kind of acquaintance or relationship with the uh, breath, it's a very good one. Because now the mind, for the first time, you know how to keep the primary object face to face. And after that only, you can get more and more information, many facets and many juice, many sap, many taste of the primary object. So therefore, each and every day, even though you are experiencing this in a repetitive manner, First and foremost thing is to some or the other keep the primary object face to face it. So therefore daily you have to uh, start like a beginner, as a just a newly born baby, how to learn breathing. That is the way you must assume at the early part of your sitting. And when and where the breath becomes face to face, develop the relationship as close as possible, as immediate as possible. And then see all the different facets, and then sometimes within the light, within the range of mindfulness or under the light of mindfulness, while observing the breath in its intrinsic touching point, you may feel other feelings in the body also, and there you may get start to entertain doubts whether to focus into the other places or in the breath, under such circumstances, keep as much as possible the primary object as the main thing and let others uh, observe as a byproduct or secondary products, keep the theme as much as possible with the breath. And another perspective is when and where you go plunge into the primary object, inside the primary object also a lot of facets are there. And then you feel like your mindfulness is loose, your concentration is vague, and the panoramic view, you don't know where to focus the attention, and under such circumstances, you have to make sure I am inside the breath. And if it is so, don't try to be smart, just let the phenomena to take place in its own accord, keep the uh, confidence that I am within the primary object and of course then onward you have nothing to do the mindfulness will take the upper hand, it will take the helm and the meditation will happen exactly in a most efficient natural way don't try to be smart, don't try to manipulate, don't try to make it efficient and even then of course the how to make it efficient, how to uh, make it more fruitful or whether I am in the Samatha way or I am in the Miripassana way, am I correct or wrong, that kind of opinions are ever happening and each and everyone is just to block the progress 
So therefore understand the yes. Doubts, but don't give fertilizer. Don't entertain them. As far as you know the path from the beginning to the here, through mindfulness and nothing to entertain doubts, but even then happening, doubts are happening, but don't get upset. Make sure you are within the primary object. Sometimes the when that happens, you are within the primary object and see different facets, all of a sudden hallucination starts, all of a sudden light appears, all of a sudden lightness appears, all of a sudden muscle dance, all of a sudden heat bulb bubbles and cold bubbles are going to happen. So they are, if you have any kind of a doubt, uncertainty, make sure rub against the primary object for verification. If you have no doubts, let it happen as it goes. Only if you have doubts, just see whether you are you have the access to the primary object. Uh, you can see, you can feel uh, the gross nature of the primary object. And uh, if you have doubts, you may come and verify. Otherwise, let it go. This is the way uh, mind is changing the language from conventional truth to the absolute truth. There, there is a paradigm shift. So only the thing we take, the primary object as the bridge, mindfulness as the theme, and let the thing happen according to its own uh, way. And it is always for each and every one, a trial and error. There is no uh, foolproof system. By practicing and by trial and error only, you develop the confidence. So therefore, if it is happening for the first time, don't try to be smart. Uh, take time and let it happen again and again. Uh, slowly, slowly, you will develop your own ways and means. And there are no golden rules. There are no formulas. Only the rule is trial and error. So therefore, anything you earn is intrinsic. Anything you earn is electric. Anything you earn is circumstantial. Anything you earn, no one can rob from you. So therefore, that is, whatever you are gaining, not from the Buddha, not borrowing from the Buddha or teacher, by yourself, that is how it becomes very immediate, very, very interesting uh, for a, uh, radical life, radical kind of thinking people. But if anyone expects the grace of the teacher or any blessings or any kind of mystics that utter chaos they can't progress so therefore uh, the meditation give enough opportunities when and where mind is ready for uh, open thinking radical reflection double promotion if you entertain in doubts thinking there is a golden formula, there is a special kind of a thing and the grace of the teacher and kind of thing, uh, you are in, you're putting your mind into the inferiority and the uh, advancement will be upset. Oh, but it is not, it is never completely get deprived of the progress, but it's a matter of time. You are wasting time. So therefore, ready to uh, be radical and ready to do experiment. This experiment is called the, the noble quest. And Buddha gave fair range for each and each and everyone to do trial and error. The tap here, uh, the the game is happening now. Go prepare. Here, Bhante. Yesterday, Bhante mentioned that after a few days of acclimation to the retreat life. Yogis will find that their inbreath and outbreath become more subtle as the air element in the body had been reduced. Bhante also mentioned that this air elements air element is attributed to tension in the body. I wish to report that I always have these symptoms for the first four days of any uh, residential retreats. The abdomen is bloated. The palms and are swollen, and the legs are tight and heavy. I wonder why. These symptoms will disappear fifth day 
onwards. Are these symptoms caused by the air element? What are the shortcomings of my personal traits that have the air element? that have triggered the air element. I wish to have Bhante's explanation on these situations and help me to overcome the shortcomings of my personal traits. Thank you. So this is uh, not directly attributed to the air element. Uh, this is the, the mind always gauging our shape, our manner, our relationship with the time and space. So therefore, even though uh, your stomach appear bloated and the legs appear solemn, they are not solemn. This is, what it is how the mind reads it. This is just a perception. So nothing wrong. After familiarization, that very perception is disappearing. That can appear like a tightness or solemn and uh, vibrations many, many things. So therefore, uh, this indicates now mind is more and more within the body. So some parts amplified, some parts uh, just neglected. So therefore, this is a, these are good signs uh, thinking that mind is at home and but it never give what you expect. Different, different things happen. After a few days, what happens is you become just familiarized with and don't heed, don't worry about them and try to give the attention to the primary object and you can proceed as if something not happened. So this is how at the beginning to the face value our mind is reacting and by through your discipline, by not giving fertilizer, by not giving food for this reaction, they are just fading off. So therefore, don't try to attribute these things to the air element, water element and kind of thing. These are mind-made things and uh, b physically it happen nothing. This is the way mind can project anything. That is what you call the magic of the mind. So you must go prepared uh, to see the magic show of the mind free of charge. Not to worry. Anything can happen, anything going to happen, happening inside your body. So never the thing what you expect to happen. And therefore if you are going to predict or calculate or project according to them, completely the wrong base. Based upon your in-breath and out-breath. Based upon your rising and falling because it is something verifiably concrete. With respect to that they are later you will consider as uh, concepts and the main thing is not to worry about them and keep the relationship more intact with the reality the, the verifiable object and later uh, less and less worries about these volatile things, unwanted things Venerable Bhante according to the instruction which was given yesterday I started sitting meditation with now I am here position. But within very short period of time, automatically my mind goes to the in-breath and out-breath. And as soon as body started to vibrate and moving. After that, entire sitting nearly one and a half hours, uh, this vibration continues. The head was touch the floor several times but the mindfulness continue and meditation proceed during that one and a half hours period mind goes to a calm and quiet solitude place two times but for a, about for a ten minutes that was interrupted by the vibration and moving of the body Bhante, please tell me, is there anything wrong which I have done? Please tell me how to overcome this vibration and go ahead with metta. The soon you die, vibration stops. For sure. But the only thing is no progress. So you are asking how to stop and progress. Sorry, impossible. The vibration itself is a progress. 
Vibration means you are at home, but you hate it. It feels fearful. It is monotonous. It is boring. So how to put up with it? And that is what you have to love yourself. This is the truth of suffering. Whenever truth of suffering manifests, you are you develop the fear of freedom. You develop the fear of novelty, new things, neophobia. So therefore, whole meditation is now to be acquainted with this vibration, not only in sitting. Please try to feel it in walking. Please try to feel it in while you are lying down on the bed. Feel, please try to feel that very vibration while you are stand still uh, in the, at the beginning of walking meditation or all the other posture junctions. And the day you understand from sitting to walking, walking to stand, stand to sit, uh, lying down, vibration, no any difference. It is uh, throughout there that is the rock bottom, that is the datum line. Only thing is due to the other different waves, spikes, you neglect about the vibration, then the mind naturally goes to the tension. As far as the vibration is there, uh, the, no tension unless otherwise you react to it, unless otherwise you feel bored. So therefore, earning vibration is one thing and the verily recognizing the vibration is second thing. So therefore, in a retreat like that, we can, at the best, we can introduce this vibration as a, another alternative to this tense full life. But it takes very long time someone to understand how to familiarize this vibration without reaction, without rejection, without develop a fear. For that only the religion must be faithful, you must go prepared, you must go little by little and familiarize it. Ultimately you find even before the meditation, soon after your birth, vibration was there as a birthright. But you had kind of a rejection, kind of a fear, kind of uncertainty. So that is how all the kinds of escapism in terms of hobbies, interests, creativity, production, progress, nonsense. All are just to avoid this vibration. But the Buddha says the vibration is the, the best place, have least amount of defilements and you are definitely progressing. So therefore, you have to made up, make your mind to accept it. But don't just merely accepting it, let it happen and again disappearing. Let it happen again and disappearing. And whether you like it or not, this is the, what it happens. That is called familiarization or mastery. But if you know this is the whole meditation is for that, you find easier. You find this itself as a uh, hobby. Otherwise, uh, your whole rational thinking is to reject it. So therefore, uh, don't consider, don't think, here now I am sitting... And in breath and out breath are two different things. Within here now I am sitting or presence of the mind, you find, within that you find in breath and out breath. As far as you are in the in breath and out breath, you are already in here now I am. And if it is, if the mind is not happy with uh, here now I am due to its boredom and monotony, then only you take the in-breath and out-breath as part and partial of here now I am. And because it is a, a bimodial movements, you find easier once again when the in-breath and out-breath becomes subtle and ceases to exist, you again merge with the vibration. So therefore, uh, this is the kind of familiarization of the same and don't ask me how to stop it and progress. Then I have to say, please commit suicide. Venerable Bhante, I live near the sea and go for walks regularly. I look the touch of the feet, feeling and walk, but then I got attracted towards the waves and the people walking. I see them as passes by the waves all in 
impermanent and carry on, carry on with uh, feelings of the feet. Please explain the best way I could make use of my walk on the beach with Metta. Uh, the best book is you have to read uh, Fridge of Capra. Fridge of Capra, that is Tao Physics. One day he goes to the sea and see the eternal dance of the waves. And more and more you absorb into the waves, he finds inside me also eternal dance and in the sea also eternal dance. And when you go home, he found the Shiva in the Hindu tradition. He's in a dance mood. He's dancing on his toe. All the hands are spread, legs are spread, and that is indicate the cosmic dance. So the moment he absorbed into the cosmic dance, he found the sea also indicating the same. Inside me also the same. So that is how his book is starting. And ultimately he says, I am a physicist. And now I know physics means madness because it is searching outwardly. But the Buddha gives the insight so inwardly. Buddha was the first one, star invented the scientific method. The so-called scientist just being following the same. They are misdirected to the outside and all the people embrace this as the knowledge, neglecting what the Buddha try to highlight it. So therefore, external world, external exploration, external knowledge become very big now instead of here now I am. Of course, directly he has not touched Buddhism as such, but he gone more closer to the uh, Hinduistic worldview of the cosmic dance. And further, I, I, um, Amit Goswami, he is taking further, taking the Tibetan Book of Death and explaining what is happening at the death. Again, the same thing merged with the cosmic dance. So therefore, when it is happening, some people start from outside and project inside. Some people start from inside and project outside. Whatever may be, at the end of each episode, the Buddha says, Iti ajjhattangva kaya kaya anupassi virati, bahiddhava kaya kaya anupassi virati, ajjhatta bahiddhava kaya kaya anupassi virati. He says, as far as the agglomeration is concerned, some people start from the within your body, body as the agglomeration, and then you project outside. Some people start from the outside, and then see my body also the same. Likewise, the knowledge has to be reciprocal each other inside and outside, then only it will become galvanized. Usually outside one is rather aesthetic, rather literal, but the inside one is more involved in the vipassana and it will be a more religious kind of thing. But the Buddha appreciate both. So therefore as far as it is conducive for your vipassana, as far as it is conducive for your perception towards impermanence, non-self, then you can embrace it. If it's a distraction, if make you unmindful, then leave it aside. Venerable Bhante, in sitting meditation, when I am focusing on the dark, dark space, every now and then sense of submerging occur. Um, Feeling of body pain, hearing, thoughts, and thinking are present. Is this samadhi? How would you compare samatha and vipassana samadhi with reference to the above occurrences? Please explain advice with metta. No, that whenever you go to that kind of thing and going to contemplate, that is the poison, the best poison you can put into that. Please don't put any labels. Please don't try to put any label. That is a poison. That is the block to the progress. So let it progress and then you can put any amount of labels late. But the, the rational mind says, no, no, no. Before progress you must have a label. 
The Buddha says when someone is stuck with the poisonous arrow and people get together and try to bring a physician and he, when he is going to remove it, that particular bloody fool says, before telling me who shoot me, what is the kind of poison, whether he is an upper class person or low class person, whether he is coming from the left or the right, I am, you are, I am not allowed you to give the arrow out. Then the Buddha says you have to, that according to my language, you have to hit the fellow and remove the, this thing, the poison, otherwise he get more and more poison by this rational thinking. After removal, any time you can understand who the who is the person shooting and what is the poison, which direction, all the kind of thing. This is what happens when you are putting the theoretical knowledge forward. It's always lucrative, but destructive. Always blocking. But without the theoretical knowledge, you can't progress. So what should happen is, at the arrowhead formation, at the tip of the arrow, it must be the product practicality, and let the theoretical knowledge follow. Don't try to take it up ahead. Then this is poison to vipassana. And in the Western, uh, sorry, Burmese masters, they become so wild, they become so upset when someone is putting theory before the practice. The way they are handling, they lose their temper also. Telling so much to keep the, uh, the uh, reality, the direct touch forward, all the time our theoretical knowledge is coming and blocking it. And sorry, this person consider this as the wisdom. That's the worst thing. This is not the wisdom, this is the poison of wisdom. As far as it is following the reality, following the, rea- the truth, yes, it is helpful in the communication. But uh, usually, the theoretical knowledge is going to go forward. Am I in Samatha or Vipassana? Is this Samatha Samadhi or Vipassana Navadi? Advancing or not? All the kind of thing is just like that po- person stuck with the poisonous arrow. Just let the practicality to go, and later you have enough time to the nomenclature and understanding this. And of course, it is important only to communicate with. But this is not the time when such a critical thing happens. You must be as much as possible practical, pragmatic, let the mindfulness to lead rather than the theoretical knowledge. Venerable Bhante. Daily cleaning of the pantry is done by different groups. They arrange the trays differently. A yogi was annoyed that the cups were not in proper order. I said, change impermanence. But she reacted. I thought we say, change, change. Impermanence, impermanence. But we cannot accept change and impermanence to ourselves, stress ourselves. Is it due to our, is it due to, um, we are not mindful of our, or our wisdom has not uh, reaped enough to notice the change and accept Please explain with metta. So I simply say, be mindful and mind your own business. We are talking not to be teachers and not to advise others. And that is the hell of a problem. We have enough space in the earth. But even then we want to catch the other person's place. So therefore you have to practice in a group meditation and mind your own business. I am not against the presenting this kind of thing to the discussion. This indicates you don't know your sphere. You don't know your jurisdiction. And out of compassion you go there. Whenever the reaction become otherwise, antagonism happens. This is the vibhavatanna. Bhavatanna become vibhavatanna. Earlier you go out of compassion to tell this is the impermanent and accept it. But instead the other person says... It is I, that is not my business. This must be in order. That you are not ready to accept that, then the fight. If you are minding your own business, you are mature enough. The wisdom is enough. 
But whenever you are going to impose upon others, the you don't know where the, the compassion change into the suicidal, detrimental thing. Therefore, whenever the compassion work, at the end, death instinct is there. Whenever the loving kindness work, erotic feelings at the other end is there. So, Mitta and Karuna never correct by itself. It has its own weaknesses. So, if you do not know that, by way of compassion you end up with hate, by way of loving kindness you end up with sensual and sexual desire. So, that is why it says, though it, they are not over the counter medicine, they are prescription drugs, they have side effects, they have after effects. So, mindfulness on the breath have no side effects, no after effects, as far as you are here and now, ever beneficial. But it is boring rather than handling to the others and go and see whether the cups are in the order, you like it, others do not like it, or others do not like, you like it. The cops are laughing at you buggers. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the cops can understand. They are meditators. They are fighting in front of me because I am imbalanced. I, 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 it is a, it's a hell of a joke for me. So when I am eating rice, always I like to have with some curries. Likewise, in my daily life is full of jokes. Whenever someone is handling others' business, from A to Z, it is a joke. We can't. We can't live by ourselves. That is why we, are, we hate in persons. We here and now, we always wanted to fork fingers into the other psychologies and expect others to behave exactly the way we expect. But you can't keep the mind here and now. Your psychology also not with you. How can you expect the other person to keep the, all the cups in order? So it's a, it's a very good... The, the, even the cup can be Buddha. Even the cup can teach you. Therefore, always you think the other person is wrong. And when I am going to correct it, not only the, he or she is not accepting and jumping upon other also, that is because the dirty term, vested interest. That is called vested interest. You take interest, you waste interest upon yourself to correct the other person. So that, uh, that person will correct the cup. So this is the worst, according to the... the, the not the Sigmund Freud, according to the the best Western, uh, the Euro European, the English psychiatrist, the worst cancer in the human mind, forking fingers into the other psychologies, and you impose, telling I have wasted upon myself, I have rights to correct others. Dirty. It is dirty. That is called mission, missionary. The Buddha, he was so careful, he has not given anyone any authority to fork fingers into others and understand we are suffering in the sue of the sansara because of this bad habit. All the parents think it is our duty to fork fingers into children. All the teachers think it is our duty to fork fingers into the students. All the doctors think it's a matter with the patients. All the kings think it is matter with the subject. This, all the four people I mentioned, they are unmindful plot. Pa teachers are not mindful pillows. Parents are not. Doctors are not. Key rulers are not. And that is why they are walking fingers with others. So you can easily say, diplomatically say, respectfully say, be mindful and mind your own business at least in the retreat. At least, given so much of opportunities, given so much of instruction, given so much of transparency, given so much of labor, division of labor, given so much of democracy, still you fork fingers and pus coming out, wrath coming out, everything coming out like a volcano. We are not fighting with the two countries and terrestrial fight. 
But the cup is not correct. Cup is not balanced. So for us to make fuss, the sit whatever the situation it may be, so whenever you mind your own business, you are just like associating a life size mirror, you can see the other side, your image, and that is the way mindfulness works. Of course the not the mindful the the vipassana works. So don't consider it as a single person mistake, it is happening. But you must know how to put it into the Dhamma, how to put it into the insight and get the lesson, learn the lesson. Venerable Bhante, there, sta- there is a stage in sitting meditation when the breath increasingly becomes subtle and yogi starts seeing images with, which signals the uh, full mindfulness. Is there a similar situation in working meditation? Please educate, educate on this aspect. Thanks. Of course, that is the task of the yogi. Whenever you see, whenever you experience, when you confront with in the sitting, uh, to see whether the same thing or same way, parallel way happening in the uh, walking also. But yesterday, when I'm explaining uh, how to, uh, even the body is sick, how to not the my mentally sick. In that case, I thought that karma sanya, so karma that means uh, materialistic, sensuous matter, and then you come back to the here, then it's the signals, uh, signs, sorry, perceptions are disturbing you as memories, and in order to get rid of the Buddha, ask you to associate immediately and closely and thoroughly with the matter, something under your very nose. And when that settles, the perception of matter come and disturb. So that is what we call when the breath becomes subtle, mental images are happening. So these images are in many facets. Some people hear this as a sound. Some people as light. Some people have light perception. Some people have muscle dance. Many, many things are happening. So when that happens, you get distracted into them and ultimately your journey, your mindfulness will be uh, distorted. So a whole interview, whole discussion needs to not to fall into that trap. Whatever arising, you must keep the track with the primary object continue the mindfulness and ultimately by disavowing, disclaimer, uh, again and again repeating this is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself, you seek with the primary object. So same thing, why not, can happen in walking meditation. Same thing, why not, can happen in your sleeping posture. Why not, it not happen in your day-to-day activities. Only the thing is, the number of variables involved in the others are too much, but uh, f- uh, the principle is the same. So therefore, first try to consolidate the experience in sitting, and then easily you can uh, see the same pattern in the walking, day-to-day activities, and all the kind of thing. So it's a good way of inquiry, but. Uh, it must. It is a cascading effect. First, the knowledge must be overwhelming in the sitting. Then only it cascades into the walking meditation, and then only it cascades into the day-to-day activities. That's the rational way. But some people start with the walking meditation, and then see uh, d- uh, inside of the sitting as well as in the day-to-day activities. Generally, what happens is first get the sitting, and then walking, then day-to-day activity, so meditate with open-mindedness. Okay, we have taken 55 minutes, another uh, 5 minutes or so remaining uh, to end our question and answer session, but the written questions are over. Okay, if there are no any other questions, occasion, uh, we will go, you have? I have one question. Yeah. I, I, I'm doing a polling and rising and polling of abdomen. Today morning uh, session, um, I got a feeling uh, that 
the, my 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 mind is uh, so close with the primary object it was like it was like going to submerge with the primary object so by by when i see that even when it when it's going to happen i was it bit got excited then all of a sudden i got uh, it it didn't happen that submerge didn't happen but there was a fear actually that fear exist like after that like one and a half hours even after the that session i don't know why that happened it's it's a, a strange uh, happening for me this is the first time that uh, fear came in the entire meditation so this is what we were referring a fear of freedom when there was something new something unknown then something liberal a mind retreat 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 back and be happy with the known uh, signs so it is coming back so therefore you understand not that the liberation is uh, rare to have but it is full of in abundance but the, our rational mind always blocking it so therefore in meditation you some or the other forcefully pushing into the unknown pushing into the novelty pushing into the liberation and again mind withdraw back as far as the withdrawal from the novelty is concerned the buddha says it is no second person involved only your ignorance and the desire involved so therefore even if it is a mishap it is under totally under your jurisdiction more and more you go prepared each time you come back you understand no second person involved so therefore more and more practice you may say go by going by preparedness you still withdraw back but in a slow manner understand what are the cause and if causative factor for me to come back because that is unknown because it is novelty because it is full of liberation so we like this prison we are very proud of this prison so when no problem happen we come back to the prison that is what the buddha says ignorance so go prepared let it happen again as you know it, the fear remain for one and a half hours i have seen people for five years they have developed that kind of a fear it's a block we never think about mindfulness mind become heavy blocked they 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 don't like even meditation holes they don't like meditation centers because that it happen you immediately cut back and then the fear so how to rectify it is um, our loko hamdro the preceptor used to say next time while when you are taking the seat make your mind prepared if such a thing happen is thing can happen so i may go prepared this is how the sir baden powell introduced this the boy scout and the girl guide so very first sentence is be prepared this is the meaning of the vigilance is the meaning of the diligence is the meaning of mindfulness so next also next time also you do the same it is happen or not only the thing is mind is little immunized uh, with the preparedness and not only for that anything happen if you are a conservative person always you uh re- retreat back to the, the non area so that is your own blockage but the human mind has the capacity to evolve so buddha is in- inviting to be radical and go forward and even then it is not happening overnight it is not happening by one shot uh, this is the way slowly slowly it is happening so it is nothing uh, permanent damage or permanent achievement you will get more and more only the thing is how much you what is your mindset how much your preparedness is so that preparedness not only for the sitting anything new you must be accommodating you must be prepared and open mindedness uh, then the inflicting nature of the uh, situation is not so problematic okay it's already time and uh, on time the rain
So we are going for walking meditation. So thank you very much for the participation to of this question and answer session.